I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on rational functions. Rational functions, as you know, are ratio of polynomials. A polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. Of course, denominator cannot be zero. That leads to restrictions. On the graph of the function, these restrictions are reflected as vertical asymptotes or holes. In this video, we will see how to solve rational equation and how to work with the word problems related to rational functions. Most of the time, these word problems are rate related. So they have a common strategy. We'll explore this strategy with the student, Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. How are you doing? Hi, sir. I'm good. How are you? Very good. Very good. So, Chelsea, what are you doing in mathematics now at school? Uh, so right now I am in grade 12. I'm taking advanced functions and right now we're doing unit five. So it's a little bit past the beginning, um, but we're doing drawing reciprocal functions and solving reciprocal functions. Perfect. So in this class, uh, let me see what you're doing. And if you have any doubts, you can ask and I can help you solve them and make you understand the whole concept. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, you can share. So right, yeah, right now we're doing 5.4 um, and 5.5, so solving rational equations. Perfect. So you are given two examples here. Mm -hmm. You can always uh, visit my YouTube channel. We have hundreds of examples on this particular topic, MHF4U rational functions. And you get more practice questions plus the previous test questions also there, okay? Now, let me make you understand how should we solve rational equations? Taking the two examples which you are sharing now with me. So let me, okay, fine. So the very first example here is x minus two over x minus three equals to zero. Now to solve this, it is pretty simple because if you want something to be zero, the numerator should be zero, correct? Right. So clearly, we have x minus 2 equals to 0, and the solution is x equals to 2. Perfect. So that is how you could actually get solution of this particular equation. Now, whenever you are given a rational function, it is, I should say by default, you should mention what are the restrictions, right? So when you begin with the solution, you should say that x is not equal to 3. So that is the restriction. Do you understand? Yes. Well, this one is a simple equation, but sometimes you may have rational equations where the restriction may be one of your solution. So those are called redundant or extraneous rules. So whenever you get a solution, you have to check your solution also by placing it back in the equation. Is that OK? OK. Or as I'm saying, first thing first, write down the restriction, correct? And now, mm -hmm. this was pretty simple. So we want the numerator x minus 2 equals to 0, which simply gives you x equals to 2 as your solution, correct? So that becomes the solution. Now, I read here that there are two methods. Well, there are a couple of methods, just as we found one, correct? Mm -hmm. Numerator has to be 0 if you ultimately want the left side to be zero, right? Okay, right. let's take up the next question, which is uh, x plus three divided by x minus four equals to x minus one divided by x plus two. So this is relatively a difficult question to do. So first thing first, what will you like to do here? So first we should do the restrictions, right? Perfect. So x is not equal to four, that is one, and it is also not equal to minus two. Is that clear? because these are the denominators, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is an equation and therefore, you can multiply both sides by the same terms, get rid of denominator. That could be one of our strategies, right? So we say strategy one, multiply both sides by common denominator. Right. So in this case, the denominator is x minus four and the other denominator is x plus two. So we can multiply by their product, correct? So if you do that, what do you get? You get x plus three times x minus two on the left side and on the right side, you get x minus one times x minus four. Is that clear to you? Yes. Because so, you multiplied, yeah. Yeah, you're multiplying from the denominator of the other side yeah. of the other. Yes. So basically, look at it like this. We have x plus three over x minus four. I'm multiplying this by x minus four times x plus two, correct? And yeah. also on the other side, which is x minus one over x plus two, I'm multiplying this by x minus four times x plus two. So when I do so, then one of these factors, they get canceled. And what you remain is without that denominator, right? A quadratic equation, basically, mm -hmm. correct? So that is strategy one, you could do this. When it is kind of a proportion type of a thing, right? We call this as cross multiplication. So what you could also do is just cross multiply and get the result. Do you see that? So when you do cross multiplication, so we get this term, I should let me show you in the question itself, this term gets multiplied with the first on the left and this gets multiplied there. Do you see that cross multiplication? So you yeah. could do this cross multiplication. Now, another thing which you could get do is to get them all on one side. So let me show you that also here in the center. So we have uh, x plus three over x minus four. We could do minus of x minus one over x plus two equals to zero. Do you see that? So we brought all the terms to one side. Yeah. And now we will take common denominator, multiply, and then continue, okay? So these are different strategies. Two of them are listed here. Uh, for you. These are the most common two strategies used to solve any rational equation. Is that clear? Yes. So one of them multiply by lowest common denominator. Second, put over one denominator. That is taking common denominator just as we did here in this particular case. Is that okay? Yes. All right. But depending on situations, we can modify our method. Cross multiplication is a very useful technique and a very fast one, which gives you the result of multiplying both sides by the common denominator at times, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, you just need to expand this and simplify, you get the idea, right? Apply the distributive property, expand and simplify, correct? So when you do that, you get what? You get x squared minus two x plus three x minus six equals two. On the other hand, we have x squared minus four x minus x, and then we have plus four, correct? Mm -hmm. Distributed property has been applied. Now you can bring all the terms together. Well, we do see x squared, x squared is canceling out. So we are left with a linear equation. Good for us, right? Now, but other things we can put together. So we have bringing this minus four x, I get four x here. Then we have minus two x plus three x, we have minus six, and then this is plus x minus four equals to zero. So I brought all the terms to the left side. I just canceled x squared, right? Now we'll combine the terms. Well, the method is you could combine the terms and then bring them, definitely, yes. 
So 4x plus 3x is 7. 7 minus 2x is 5x plus x here, 6x. As far as the numbers are concerned, we have minus 6 and minus 4, which gives us minus 10 equals to 0. And so x is equals to 10 over 6, which is 5 over 3, correct? Yeah. So what do you notice here? That while you were simplifying, you could bring x terms to the left side and the constants to the other side. You get the idea? Yes. You could do that. So, so let's summarize what all you could do, right? So the best way to solve this could have been first cross multiply and since we had a linear equation right so we had a linear equation right in that case you could bring variables on left equals to constant on right. Is that clear to you? Yeah. But if it was a rash a quantity, get all the terms on the left side. So the idea is if it is quantity, bring all the terms to the left side, since in that case, you know, you may have to factor, correct? And then find the solution. Yeah. And then you factor and sol solve. But for linear, it was very simple, x, and then we had this constant, we could divide and get the answer. Mm -hmm. So you get an idea, right? So that is how you have to solve such a question, correct? My focus at present is to show you the method Right? I might have done calculation mistakes. I want you to solve it yourself and verify the result. Do you get the idea, right? Right? So I just did some calculations here, but my idea here is to just teach you the method. I would like you to perform all the calculations, get the right answer. Once you get the answer, you have to check solution, right? That will be your last step, check solution. Also note that solution should not be including four or minus two. Is that okay? Right, because it's a restriction. Okay. Since it is, it is. Well, it is not one of the solutions in our case. So yes, um, that's fine. So I think the solution solving rational equation from these examples is absolutely clear, right? Is it yeah. clear to you? No yeah. difficulty, right? And for the second method that we learned, the the moving everything to one side or the over one denominator, you should get the same answer, right? Of course. So yeah, of course. So basically, okay. let me clear all. I've cleared. So we have this. It's like x plus three over x minus four. Bring all the terms together. We'll give you x minus one over x plus two equals to zero. Then the common denominator is x minus four times x plus two cross multiply, right? So we have x plus three times x plus two minus x minus one times x minus four equals to zero. Now that means that numerator should be zero, correct? Mm -hmm. so, so we get this cross multiplication statement, which is same as we wrote earlier, which is x plus three times x plus two minus x minus one times x minus four. Is it okay? Equals yeah. to zero, correct? So it means same as cross multiply, bring the terms together. So we get the same result, perfect. Mm -hmm. So that is how you could do it. Okay, for more examples, you can visit my YouTube channel and I'll also send you some. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Okay, so let's see the word problems which uh, are there for you. Yeah. Uh, here you go. Correct. Can you please read the question? Yes. Um, example C. Uh, when they work together, Gaddy and Alice can deliver flyers to all the homes in their neighborhood in 42 minutes. Mm -hmm. When Alice works alone, she can finish the deliveries in 13 minutes less time than Gaddy can when he works alone. How long does it take Gaddy to deliver the flyers by himself? Correct. Now, this becomes a rational function, mainly because the variable here is how fast a person is working, correct? So if you work fast, you will do it in lesser amount of time. You get the idea? Yeah. 
right? So, because you're dividing by a bigger number, you get a smaller time. When you divide by a bigger number, you get a smaller time. So basically, it is like similar to speed distance, I should say distance speed time problem, right? So when you have a rate, it becomes a rational function, correct? See, in this t and speed, speed is the rate of change, which is in the denominator, right? So if you want to find the time of delivery, you know, the time is distance over speed. Do you see that? So speed, the rate at which you are working is in the denominator. So you are very familiar with distance speed time problems, correct? Mm -hmm. So this is kind of same problem. So first, let us define the variables. It says, when they work together, Getty and Ellis, so you have to define the variable, deliver the flyers to all the homes in the neighborhood in 42 minutes. So together, they do it in 42 minutes. When Ellis works alone, she can finish the delivery in 13 minutes less time than Gaddy can when he works alone. So we have to define a variable. Let's say time taken by Gaddy is G. Let's say time by Gaddy. So Alice's time would be Gaddy minus 13. Got it. In that case, Alice will be, you can will be G minus 13. Is that okay? Now, when they work alone, I mean, when they work alone, this is their time, right? Mm -hmm. But when they work together, they can finish the complete job in 42 minutes. So we say complete job is one unit, right? Mm -hmm. So in one minute, how much job will they do? One over their speed. So one over 42. One over 42 is the total, right? So yes, one over 42. With their rate, one over G plus one over G minus 13 should be equal to one over 42. We get the idea. Yeah. So in one unit of time, in this case, it is minute, 142 portion of the job will be done, right? And mm -hmm. each will do one over G and one over G minus 13, depending on the rate. So you get an equation. And this equation is only in one variable, and therefore you can easily solve it, correct? So now, can you help me solve this equation? How will you do it? Um, so first we can multiply the yes. denominators to the numerators. So G minus three, we have a common denominator here, right? Oh, Over, right. we'll multiply this and this by G, right, plus G. And mm -hmm. we have a common denominator of G times G minus 13, correct? equals to one over 42, clear? Mm -hmm. Now you can simplify the numerator, which is G plus G is 2G. So we have 2G minus three over all this. Well, this is uh, 13 minutes less, right? So we'll just open this. I, I should have written 13. I wrote three, I don't know why, 13 minutes. Sorry, 13, right? 2G minus 13. So when you multiply this, you get g squared minus 13g, right? Equals to one over 42, clear? Mm -hmm. Now you can cross multiply and then solve. So let's multiply by 42, the terms 2g minus 13. And Are that will- Sir? Yes. Could you cross out the- um... G minus 13, because they're both on the numerator and denominator? No, no, no. Once you simplify, then you can cross over. Okay. Or you have a common factor. So at present, you will just cross multiply. I just simplified G and G, added them to make 2G. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. That's what I did, right? Now, so, so I cross multiply with 42. So we get 42 times this equal to, on the other side, we have G squared minus 13G. Correct? As you can see in this particular case, we are having a quadratic equation, right? Right. So we'll bring all the terms together on one side. So let me bring it right in the center and we'll solve further. So we have G square minus 13 G, taking these terms to the right side, 42 times two is 84, right? So with the negative sign, 84 G and 
42 times 13 with a positive sign. We can use calculator and multiply this. 42 times 13 equals to zero. So you see one quadratic equation right there. Okay. Now you can simplify, use calculator. Where g squared minus, add these two terms, four and three is seven, and eight and one is nine, 97, and use calculator to multiply 42 and 13. 546 equals to zero. Clear? At this yeah. stage, you can factor or you can use quadratic formula. Correct? Mm -hmm. So this is a quadratic equation. So you can factor or you can use quadratic formula to get your answer. Correct? And then you would have two answers if you use quadratic formula, right? Yes. One of them will not be valid. Now, that's a very brilliant question. Now, what is not valid? We have g minus 3. Do you see that g minus 13, right? The time to complete the job has to be positive, and therefore, g has to be greater than 13. Do you see that? Yeah. It cannot be equal to 13. It, has, it cannot be less than 13. So we have a restriction here. So the restriction here is g is greater than 13. Is that clear to you? Mm -hmm. So the other answer, which is less than 13, should be is an extraneous root, is not valid for this particular situation. Mm -hmm. Do you get the idea? Yes. So that's how you should be doing it. Now, I shall also discuss with you the factoring technique. See, if there is a big number, how do we factor? Like 546. So, and this is 97, not easy to factor otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. So you can try this. You can find factors of 546. For example, you can divide by two, right? So you get what? You get 273, right? Yeah. Now this can be, because seven plus two is nine and three, it can go by three. So 391. Correct? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is how you're trying to get this answer. So in this case, it is kind of difficult. So I like you to do quadratic formula. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. So use quadratic formula to solve. Okay. Perfect. So uh, you can do the solution. We'll look into the next question now. Okay. Uh, example D, um, Anastasia bought a case of concert t-shirts for $450 and she kept two t-shirts for herself and sold the rest for $560, making a profit of $10 on each shirt. How many t-shirts were in the case? Okay, how will you approach this question? Um... Okay, so what is profit? Profit is what you sold for, let's say selling price, minus the cost price. That is what profit is, correct? Yeah. Now, a case of t-shirts for 450 and it says how many t-shirts were there in the case. So first define your variable. Let x be the number of t-shirts, right? Mm -hmm. Now see, what is the cost price? Of all these t-shirts, the cost is $450, correct? Yes. So cost of one? So it would have to be um, divided yeah. by the number. Yeah, so total is X, right? Yeah. And 450 is the total cost. So if you divide with the number, you get the money, dollar. Dollars per piece, right? So dollar on the top, right? Cost of one piece, one each will be dollar 450 divided by the number x, correct? Mm -hmm. What is the selling price? Sold at 560, correct? How many pieces? 10, uh, how many pieces? 
she kept two t-shirts for herself. That means x minus two. Is it okay? X minus two. She kept two. That means x minus two were sold. Perfect. Yeah. And what is the profit in this case? Ten dollars per shirt. So we have our equation. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So the equation is that the difference between this uh, selling price, which is five sixty over x minus two, minus the cost price, which is four fifty over x, should be equal to ten dollars. Get the idea? Yeah. So that is how you can now solve it. Again, cross multiply. So we're learning the technique of solving equations. So now, see, in the word problems, you have very difficult equations to solve, right? So we'll multiply each term by x minus 2 times x. And so what do you get? You get 560x minus x minus 2 times 450 equals to 10 times x times x minus 2. Is that clear to you? Yes. All the terms, right? Because we are multiplying. Now, you need to open the bracket, solve, and get the answer. You get the idea. You can do that part, right? So you have 560x minus multiplying with x will be 450x minus and minus plus 900 equals to 10x squared minus 20x, correct? Yes. Bring all the terms together. So when you bring all the terms together, I would like you to keep the leading coefficient always positive. So 10x squared is on the right-hand side. So we'll move all the left side items to the right-hand side, keeping that as positive. You understand the strategy, correct? So I will write 0 equals 2. So we have 10x squared. Right, and then we have minus 20x. You can do 460 minus uh, 450 is how much? 110, right? Mm -hmm. So minus 110 x and plus 900 becomes negative 900. So you have your equation to solve, which is 0 equals to 10x squared. And when you add this, you get minus 130x minus 900. So, well, you can divide by 10. So 0 equals to x squared minus 13x minus 90. We can divide both sides by 10 and simplify it, correct? Mm -hmm. So that gives you 0 equals to x squared minus 13x minus 90. Can you factor this? Yes. Yes, try. What do you get? So you should get negative 5 and 18. Okay. So let me write it in the factored form. So you mean x minus 18 times x plus 5, correct? Since, it, see, 90 is 9 times 10, but that does not give us minus 13. So we'll try 5 and 18, correct? And 5 and 18 will give us minus 13 if 18 is negative and 5 is positive. And this gives us the value of x as 18, which is a valid answer, but x equals to minus 5 is not a valid answer. So we'll, dis we'll disregard that. And therefore, we get that there are 18 t-shirts in a case, right? Yeah. Do you get the whole concept? How should we solve a word problem, right? Yeah. Basically, you should be very good at solving equations when you're trying to solve word problem, correct? So can you summarize what have you learned in today's lesson? Uh, yes. So in today's lesson, um, well, I'll go back up here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we learned for solving rational equations, there's two methods. So multiplying by the common, least common denominator, or you could move everything to one side and then multiply by the denominators. Either way, you should get the same answer. Um, and then we also learn um, how to solve word problems. So we learned that first you need to find the variables. Um, Define variables, yes. Yeah. Um, and then again, using the method we learned before, either the using the least common denominator 
or moving everything to one side and using the denominator um, to then solve the equation. Got it. So Chelsea, did you understand how should we solve word problems? Yeah. Especially relating to rational functions, correct? Mm -hmm. Are you ready for some good examples? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> then you go to YouTube channel of mine, just type in Anil Kumar, rational functions playlist, and then I'll tell you which examples to do. Okay, so do that and then share the screen. Okay, okay, so there you go. So you see a playlist which says rational functions worksheet, right? Mm -hmm. Now, most of the questions which are given in this particular playlist are from the previous test papers. You get the idea? Yeah. Some of the questions you also see are mentioned, they're from your book because you know many times book questions are there in the test paper. And very popular questions which have been in past test papers are here. So I'd like you to click on the second question first, which is PISA cost rational function. This is one of the most popular questions which I've seen in past five years. Rational. Okay. So please go through the question, read it, and tell me, how will you solve this question? Okay. So question 12, the football booster bought pizza for $900 to sell at the game. They kept 10 pizzas to feed the players after the game and sold the rest for $1,000 and 40. Ah, oh, sorry. 1,040, correct. 1,040. There were eight slices in each pizza. Their profit was 50 cents a slice. Mm -hmm. uh, question A, how many pizzas were in the original order? B, what was the original price of each pizza? And C, what did they charge per slice? Correct. How will you do this question? Tell me. Uh, so for question A, how many pieces were in the original order? The first thing is to find what X is. So the number yeah, of... So we'll say let this be X. We don't know about it, correct? Yeah. Let this be X, yeah. So then... X will have to be X minus 10. Okay. So you're trying to say that X is the total they purchased and yeah. what they sold was X minus 10, right? So yeah. we can find the cost price and the selling price, correct? Mm -hmm. So what is the cost price here? So cost price would be $900 over X. And the selling price? Uh, $1,040 over X minus 10. Why X minus 10? Uh, because it says they kept 10 pizzas. Very so that the 10 pizzas, you have to subtract from the cost. Perfect. So you've got the difference between them. And if I take the difference, we get the profit, right? So yeah. we are not talking about profit, correct? What is the profit given to you? Uh, profit is... Eight slices uh, in a pizza. Slices. 50 yeah. cents per slice. Profit is 50 Dollar. cents per price, uh, slice. So eight slices. So it gives you how much profit? $4. Yeah, 50 cents times eight slices, which is $4, right? You get your equation. Yeah. 900 over X minus 1040 over X minus 10 equals to $4. And you can solve the single variable X in this particular equation. Does it make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Correct. That yeah. is how you, so you got the knack of it. That's clear. Okay. Just go through this list. We'll select one more question from here. Let me select a tough one for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chocolate factory. Chocolate factory. This is very popular question. Question number five. <laughs> I'm Anil Kumar. Can you please read the question and try to solve it? Uh, the chocolate factory has two machines. Machine A takes S minutes to fill a case with chocolates and machine B takes S plus 10 minutes to fill a case. Working together, the two machines take 15 minutes to fill a case. Approximately how long does each machine take to fill a case? How will you perform or write an equation and solve this? Tell me. Um, so the first machine takes S plus 10 S minutes. Yeah. And machine B takes S plus 10 minutes to fill a case. Correct. Um, and one is 15 minutes. So it'd be one yeah. over. 15. One over 15. Correct. We are talking about rate, right? So yeah. rate will be 
in one unit of time, how much work is done? Mm -hmm. Total job takes 15 minutes, right? But hey, one minute, 150. So one over 15, correct? So similar, when they work together, one over S plus one over S plus 10 equals to one over 15. Simple equation to solve. S is the only unknown. You can solve it. You get the idea. Yeah. So follow this particular strategy and solve any question on rational functions easily. And you have so many practice questions here. Try to do them in your own time. And if there is any difficulty, share with me. I'll help you out. Okay? Okay, okay then. Thanks a lot. We'll end the class here today.